Today, everybody, welcome to episode two of Mark's Card Shop Talk. We're here with Rick's Cards. Uh, Rick's a good buddy of mine. We've, uh, you know, we've been on the collecting scenes shoot since it started, like getting crazy show yeah, after show. It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while, hasn't it? Two years for sure. Yeah. So we appreciate Rick stopping by today. You know, we're gonna go over just, you know, I had a few questions for Rick, but mainly just to uh, dig down deep and uh, let Rick show you who he is. Um, so appreciate everybody stopping by today and. Uh, uh, catching some film. All right, so with Rick here today, you know, uh, it's it's a beautiful day. We actually got a little bit of rain threw us off a little bit, don't you think? Oh, wild yesterday, man. Yeah, Come back from Vegas, it was, whew, I mean, you saw it. Flooding. Flooding. California, bro. Yeah, but. it's California. So, yeah, we did get a little rain. So, those of you that are watching in California, we're not used to the rain. <laughs> Uh, so with that, you know, we, we did go to Vegas. Uh, I figured, you know, let's come back from Vegas. Let's kind of give like a synopsis of kind of your weekend and things that you were looking for, things that you, uh, you know, things that you attacked. Uh, so with that, you know, Rick, uh, it, it was a long weekend, I guess, for you. You know, a young, a young guy like you, <laughs> we make it a long weekend, correct? Oh, yeah. Very, right. very long. Just so, got back in last night. Really? So how does it go? Maybe give me, let's get a start, uh, or I guess give me an update of like start to finish. Okay. Like, you know, how, do, how does your show scene start I, as we get in there? I, you know, I've seen you there all weekend. But, you know, yeah. we want to know, like, how does it begin, during, after? Yeah, I mean, I think it, be, it begins, I think, well before the show even starts. You know, like going into it and, and, and prepping for it is, is, is big. That takes a, takes a few days, takes a while to do that. But going into it, I just kind of had an open mind. I kind of wanted to um, expand my inventory and kind of move some of my the stuff that I've had kind of had for a little bit, a little bit, you know, kind of push that out and and, and reorganize. Um, Are you downsizing? Not so much downsizing, but I'm trying to focus my collection and my buying and selling into less. I want to say less base stuff, less more common, a little more common stuff, to more colored and numbered and stuff like that. So I kind of that's what I kind of went into it with that. But um, um, the selling, I think you can see the selling of the show wasn't huge, but. The inventory over there was insane. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of inventory. Like insane. Like, and Mike made a, a great point on Saturday. Uh, we were talking about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm not moving as much as I kind of want to do. And Mike said, look, man, you know what? Sometimes you can't sell as much. It's just the way it is. Sometimes you got to go in there, and you got to just be willing to to, to expand your inventory. And deals, you know, and so that's what I did. Sunday night, Sunday, Sunday in the morning. Looking to make I, deals. I thought about Mike, and I was like, you know what, dude? I'm gonna make some deals. Just yeah. went out, and, you know. Yeah, I guess not let it let it come to you, but more or less just go out and go get it. And exactly. like you said, you know what? I, I have a game plan, but sometimes you do have to pivot. You know why? Exactly. why. But uh, you know, with that, do you think it was a su success for yes. you? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent a success. It was well worth it. Um, and networking too. I've yeah. met a lot of new people. Met a lot of guys that I've known on Instagram for a few years, but I never got a chance to meet them. Um, so met tons of people. Uh, got my name out there. Um, yeah, it was yeah, definitely I, worth it. I think that's like one of the most important things about going to these shows. You yeah. know, you could talk about your buys and your sells, yeah. you know, and, you know, chart them and do, do whatever you do. But, you know, to get in there and really meet people and interact with people and let them get to know kind of who you are on a side of you that, again, you know, most of them just see us as Rick's underscore cards 24, right? Exactly. <laughs> and Mark's underscore cards. So it's good to kind of get out there, show face, and, uh, you know, work with people, you know. Sure. So, you know, I know that's a big thing for us, and as we travel around is to say, hey, you know, you have your game plan, you know, do you want to get inventory, do you want to do this, but more importantly is what kind of networking can you get out of it, exactly. you know, and, and just me, there's so many cool people in this industry that, uh, and they all have different tastes, mm -hmm. you know, different yeah. teams, right. and so, uh, you know, going back to, uh, you know, you, your show, you got back safe, mm -hmm. what, what were some of the cool pickups you picked up, we'll kind of cool start pickups. there. Oh, man. Picked up uh, a lot of different stuff. I, I went pretty strong on Trey Young and John Morant, the two guys I really like um, going into the season. And 
So I try to go into some more of the unique stuff. I got some color stuff. I got some some numbered stuff. Um, I mean, I'll show yeah, let's take a peek. Let's let's take a some peek at that. Some random stuff in here. Again, gives uh, us some ideas. Yeah, you know? I Trey Young and John Morant. There's a couple color cards. If you want to show them out, a couple uh, prism yellow, prism blue and a John Morant blue. Uh, both graded into nine, but something I really like and um, I think the eye appeal is fantastic, especially on that John Morant. Yeah, I mean, just no, they look certainly at the card. It's beautiful. And actually, blue is um, one of the card colors that is like very, very accepting to like buyers, yeah. you know, and even sell. I mean, it goes both ways. Blue, blue's the color, like. You, and, you know, when you get into Prism, Blue's obviously, you know, yeah. the number it is. But people will prefer, like, or, let's go back. In Prism, you have Blue. Then you have Orange. Mm -hmm. Then you have, you know, all these colors. But the one that, the, the card that it, people prefer is the Blue. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, is it because it's the guy's industry? or I don't know what it is. It's just, I think it's the, the eye color, too. You know, I don't know what it is. You know, eye appeal. Eye appeal's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah like, no, even, if a, even if an orange is shorter print, people don't really care for it because the color orange, like, it's, you know, it's just, I guess. Not it's kind of interesting, looking. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've, I thought about, you know, or, you know I, was, I, I was a big 2018 Prism guy, and I was like, man, orange is cool. But then when you, go, when you have it, you're like, oh. The blue is just... Yeah, well, I think that's where, like, the huge, like, jersey match kind of came from, too, is back 2018-19 Prism. Like, history for me, I was opening a lot of that stuff, and all I wanted was that Luca blue and the Trey red, just because it looks so pretty, <laughs> right. and it looks so cool, and I was like... Yeah, that's another good point. So not only the blue parallel, but jersey matching is a is a yes. cool one. Yeah. yeah, no, jersey matching is cool. You, you know, you mentioned these being nines, but when you look at these... How hard is it to grade these things? So that's the thing. Is, I mean, you know, I, I buy the card. Yeah, you definitely... I bought the card. I didn't buy, I didn't buy the grade. Yeah. And, that's what you, you know. That's what you got to do. You do. And I mean, when you look at these cars, these are absolutely gorgeous. What else do you have? So I picked up. Uh, decided to pick up an auto at the end there. At the end of the, this is like my. I think one of my last pickups was a end case number to twenty five. John Morant. It's a super short. Again, that's what I'm trying to go into. Kind of more shorter print and more more rare items. We call it that. Uh, yeah. So. I mean, John Moran and Case Auto. On card. On card. Beautiful. On card. BGS nine yeah. ten auto. Can't go wrong with it. Can't. And. Like you said, the number stuff, you know, the quality of the pieces that you are that you have yeah. in your box is I mean, guys is guys an absolute stud. Yeah. I picked up a couple other smaller let's see, pieces. Let's see. I mean, the guys been playing so solid so far. Why not some Sexton stuff? So this is kind of like your prospecting in a sense. And I wouldn't say he's a prospect, but yeah, you know, somebody exactly. on like a, you know, definitely a lower price tier, Colin Sexton. You know, got a little bit of shine. You know, again, some nice appeal. More Trey stuff. Uh, oh yeah, these are cool. These Donruss, yeah, signature series. I mean, yeah, are, why not? You know? Oh, here's another card I picked up. Kind of for my PC. Hey, these, these right here are super tough to grade, these cards right here, because they're so thin yeah. in the packs they came in. Let's go that one. Uh, let's pick that one up. Who doesn't need that in their collection? Right? Uh, Mike I Trout. Mean, I doesn't? mean, you know what? We can talk a, a lot about Mike Trout on here. Uh, like I said, I think Mike Trout's an unbelievable player. Uh, me, personally, I just... Not that I'm, I'm a Dodger fan and I don't like the Angels, but I just, you know, when it comes to having pieces... I, I like the winners, you know, guys yep. that win. I agree, 100%. Uh, but, but again, he's going to be a Hall of Famer, uh, no doubt about it. Unbelievable stats. His war is off the charts. I mean, he's done it for a long time. Yep. And again, he has a name, Trout. Trout. You know, he they, he used to go to the games, like, well, how many years ago they had the big old Trout heads on there? Yeah. Mike Trout, man. I hope he comes back healthy, just saying. Oh, yeah. Well, but you got to think about it. The, the size of him and the way he plays kind of, I mean, physics. I mean, it's yeah. tough. It's yeah. tough. I yeah, mean, he's sliding, sure. diving, the torque on his swings. I mean, it's so powerful yeah. that, I mean, hey, your body's meant. But if he comes to the Dodgers, I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but if he did. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's an American League guy at, at the end of his yeah. career. So you hit in DH because he, he, he could always hit. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, that's a nice piece. Take some. Nothing crazy there, but a beautiful, again, eye appeal. Eye appeal is huge for me. I mean, look at that card. It's yeah, see, that's something about Ricky. You know, the last, you know, handful of cards is, like you said, when you open the box, it's like, wow, you know. You're not going to see base yeah. 10, base is. 10, base 10. Yeah. The pop report is astronomical. and Exactly. So, I mean, that's – and AD uh, was actually one of my first uh, PCs back in 20, like 2014, 2015. I, I just, I've always loved his game. I've always loved the way he played ever since he came out of college. And um, so I, I actually had a humongous Anthony Davis collection. I'm talking like 45 that's to 50 autographs. Good. That's something to know about you. All right. Like – I thought it was only Packers. No, like <laughs> National Treasures, like autos, like rookie autos, flawless autos, like just crazy stuff. Wow. And for me, what I got, the reason I got out of it is because back when he signed his, he signed a huge extension, extension with New Orleans, I just got to myself, I'm like, man, look, like as much as I love the player, he's not going to ever win in, on the Pelicans. I mean, we all, we all kind of knew that. Does that go for Mike Trout? 
that's another tough thing. But I think Mike Trout is on that. I think Mike Trout's on joke. that level. You yeah, know no, Mike Trout's like, a monster. Again, <laughs> Mike Trout. Shout out to Mike Trout. I mean, the guy is an absolute stud. Yeah, but so I decided, you know what? I'm gonna move my AD collection. I'm gonna kind of get out of that. So I sold everything. Sold everything. And it, the next year, he gets traded to the Lakers, and obviously, I'm a huge Laker fan. And that it kind of killed me on the inside. I was like, you know what? Did though? you stop collecting? Did I stop collecting Anthony Davis or cards? No. 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 Never, dude. It's, you, once you get into this hobby, yeah. you can't get out. Yeah. You're no. stuck. It's crazy. But yeah, so I decided at the show, I saw this, and I was like, you know what? It's pretty, dude. Like, let's do it. Go back into my roots a little bit. Yeah. That was a last second trade. I just thought it was, again, nice looking card. Oh, absolutely. Hype feels great. Yeah. James Harden. Guys, the score doesn't last. Well, the cool off, part man. about these, they're game news pieces. Exactly. You know, yeah, and then you look at them, they're just 14. clean. Yeah. Super clean cards. This is my last big pickup of the day. Wow. Somebody who I think is. Yeah, those are nice. I think this is severely, severely undervalued. Don't, no, I mean, I you know, Dwayne Wade's market, you know, we could, weird. it is a weird, weird, you know, the guys won, the guys played, I mean, everywhere, he's from Marquette, you know, his Marquette yeah, days, he's take them on the run, then he gets to Miami, does an unbelievable job, yeah. and, you know, I was talking to a buddy uh, over the weekend, and we were talking about guys like that, that you can just, you have on a team, and they just know how to bring guys together, yeah, exactly. and he's one of them, so yeah, going back to the card market on his, it is weird, um, should he, you know, be up there in the upper echelons of... I mean, geez, look, you, you put two cards out here. Let's just think about it. You have a John Morant 9, and you have an SP Dwayne Wade. Comp values, I mean, it's which one should be, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's that's so, what I always go on based when I'm buying stuff because, like, Dwayne Wade, we're going to remember for, for years, in my opinion. We're going to remember for a long time. And, like, look, John Morant's fantastic. He's amazing. But we don't know what's going to happen in the next, you know, five to ten years. What a great start, though, isn't he? Guy's insane. I know it was the first, insane. yeah, first three and I was starting over. Yeah, that's the reason I went into yeah. some of his stuff. Like yeah. this show, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy some draw. I'm gonna buy some trade because Luca obviously is fantastic. Yeah, everybody wants Luca. The guy's a generational talent, nice. but he's so expensive already. Yeah. Like it's yeah, like it's holy, it's like holy smoke. Why is he so expensive? I mean, okay, let me, let me backtrack. There's a reason why he's so expensive. You know, he's obviously amazing, but guys like Trey Young, who took his team to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And has yeah, played. Yeah, different kind of games, though. Exactly. You know, different kinds of games. Yep. You know, uh, you know, can Trey Young put up the triple double numbers on yeah. on a night in, night out? You know, like I said, Trey's gonna put up his points. You know, dishes assists, but you know, Luca is banging the boards too. Yeah. And you know, he he's at he's at a position, or he what he does is there's really positionless. You know, on him. Yeah, so Luka, he's. I mean, the guy's insane, man. Yeah. I just, but we'll see. Like, I mean, I get it. Like when you put up resumes to resumes. You know, okay, but Luca did have a good Olympic run. Crazy Olympic I mean, run, man. Crazy. I mean, you anybody else on the team? They're not taking. They're not taking his national team that far. Yeah, <laughs> I well, mean, they I mean, weren't even supposed to qualify. And look at the guy. Yeah. yeah. So I think that you know both pickups, uh, both guys. Let's go to this one. This right is just here. A, a a PC pickup kind of thing for me, and that's that's what I collect. How long have you been a Packers fan, Rick? So as we know, like I, I mean, just mentioned, Rick is a Packers fan. Since I was was born, really, my father was a Packers fan. He's a Packers fan, so that's. I grew up that way, um, so kind of a weird story. I want to be a Packers fan. A lot of people ask me that, like, you know, you're from LA, you're from Los Angeles, like, it's so random to be a Packers fan. Like, you don't find a lot of Packers fans around here. And really, really funny story. My 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 dad played Pop Warner back when he was like 10, 11, 12 years old, and uh, I grew up in a city called Moore Park, really, really tiny city. And so our football team was called the Moore Park Packers. Yeah, that's right. And so my dad didn't. Didn't grow up watching football, but he wanted to play football. So he just said, you know what? Like, hey, my team name is Packers. Like, there's a team in the NFL called the Packers. So I'm going to root for them. So obviously when I grew up, you know, he was a Packers fan. So I decided, you know, I fell in love with it. And watching, I watched Brett Favre more at the end of his Packer run. Um, and then when Aaron Rodgers took over, that's when I really, like, got fan. Like, oh, my God. Like, this is, like, you know, this, this guy's amazing. And yeah. No, they definitely, the Packers are a great organization. Yeah. I mean, great organization. Do you own any so, stock in the Packers? I do not. Not yet. No. Yeah, I, that'd be cool. I'm supposed to go to Lambeau in, what, two months. So. Wow. Yeah, I hope so that's we'll yeah, I hope that's a great game. Are you going to the game? Uh, I'm trying to go to Packers Vikings. Actually, cool. my best friend's a uh, Vikings fan, so our goal has been to go to Lambeau and watch a game, and we're going to try to make it happen. It's well, if you say in a month, I think about it right now. We're end of October, so that puts us at the end of November. Well, the, the game's in January. It's oh, okay. Months. It's January. How cold is it going to be? Are you going to have a they said uh, snow zero, shovel out? They said zero degrees. Oh, <laughs> oh man. No. The game from California, it was 49 last night, and that was freezing. Freezing, huh? Yeah. Oh, no, we get freaked out a little bit of rain exactly. let alone snow yeah no you know what this weekend the uh packers are going to be playing the 
Cardinals here. Uh, you know, I did put a Kyler Murray ball up here for you. I don't know if you've noticed <laughs> it, you know, as, as you yeah. sit, you know. So what are you thinking about the game this weekend? I felt really good going to this game. Uh, but yesterday, unfortunately, Devontae Adams came down with a uh, – they put him on the COVID list, which yeah. is a huge loss for us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Profit. top player on our team. And oh, top receiver in the league. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I'm a little biased. No, yeah, I, agree, I mean, again, I best yeah, let's, let's, out there and, let's turn on the game. That's all I say. Let's just turn yeah. on the game and I see what he does. I still think that, um, I mean, obviously I'm a little biased, but I still think Aaron Rodgers is so talented that even going into this game without a top receiver, I think he can still make, make things happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this game is going to be heavily decided on our defense. If yeah. our defense can even can make the step up, because we've struggled um, against the run game. Um, and James Conner, was it Conner and um, was it King and Drake? They have over there? No. Ellington. Ellington. Sorry. But James Conner's been killing it. I think the run game, and then Kyler Murray, man, such a talented quarterback, uh, especially running the ball. So it's like, it's going to be such a tough game for us to go into and match up. Yeah. Especially defensively. But I still think we can make a game out of it. I still think we can go in there and uh, make some noise and at least. It's Sunday. It's football. I mean, again, we, we all play fantasy football. I know I do, and you do. We're in our, the same uh, fantasy league for the yep. first time. Yep. And so with that, I mean, you can see right? the expect. You know, you think this team's gonna win, and then before you know it, the Bengals blow out the Ravens. the Ravens. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, again, it's just the way it goes. And like you said, whoever can the scheme, stop stop the run, exactly. keep Kyler in the pocket. Uh, I mean, they're having they're off to a great start. Yeah. Those Cardinals. It's a tough. It's, a, it's definitely gonna be a tough game, especially for my Packers. But yeah. you got a lot of veterans on that team now. A lot of veterans, you know. But Coach just, Cliff has uh, assembled a good group there, especially on defense. A lot of veterans. Yeah, we, and we're bringing in. We just brought in uh, Whitney Merciless. Just got okay. cut, but he already had. He's already got up to three sacks, I believe, this season. Guy looks solid. I think he's a great guy to add to our D. And uh, Zadarius. So Smith you're trying to pull one back. out. You're trying to pull a rabbit out of the hat, right? I mean, now. I'm just saying Zadarius Smith might be coming back too. So we got two big guys that should be coming back, and hopefully can stop slow down Kyler Murray, but. Okay. Nobody's been able to slow down Kyler yeah. Murray so far yeah. this year. So no, Ky shout out to Kyler Murray. It's been a yeah, yeah, great, great start to his season. And again, I mean, like you said, he's played well. He's a first round draft pick, you know, by the oh, Oakland yeah, A's, so awesome. and you know, it's crazy. You know, yeah, it's crazy. But hey, my boy Aaron Rodgers, man, he, I've seen that guy. Do yeah, no. If you want to talk about card stuff. market, I mean, you could talk about Aaron Rodgers. You know, yeah. like the same thing. I mean, the guy just wins. I mean, he, his winning yeah. percentage, you know, along with you know them, you knowing the Packers are going to compete for a playoff spot every year. Yep. I don't know if it's the bad division with the Lions and, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I, think I think it's the talent. I think it's the talent of Aaron Rodgers. He's I don't know if it's past. playing, you know, them on uh, Thanksgiving. You know, you get an extra one in the bucket, but yeah. no. Hey, we beat some solid teams this year, but I think going back to the whole winning thing with Aaron Rodgers, I think he's... Yeah, you said he's a winner. Yeah, he's, he's a winner. He, he finds ways to pull it out. And I remember after week one, after week one, the Packers lose to the Saints, get demolished by the Saints. Everybody started saying, you know what, dude, Rodgers is done. done. Rodgers yeah. is already checking out. He doesn't care. Um, you know, and look at us now, six and one, six and one. Well, it doesn't don't, he doesn't listen to the music? Exactly. Yeah, he doesn't, doesn't listen to music. I mean, I mean, think about what's been talked about Aaron Rodgers over the last five months. Yeah. You know, it just goes to show. You know, again, if you're listening to all the music and you're buying and all and all the hype and you're doing all that. You know, it will affect you. And according to what we've seen, I mean, it sure doesn't look like it's affected him because no. he's been tunnel vision and his uh, demeanor is on point and he's he's ready to rock. I mean, he, like he said. I'm, I'm excited for this year. I think as long as we can get healthy by the playoffs because we've been missing a lot of players. We're missing a lot of players on no the excuses, team. No excuses, Rick, please. No, no excuses. Because here's the thing. You're in the NFC, okay? The, the Packers are in the NFC. I'm a Cowboy fan. Oh, okay. here we go. Here so we, we go. have, uh, you know, hopefully we can redo this, you know, when we have the Packers and the, and the Cowboys in the playoffs coming down yeah, the line. I think it's right, I think it's right there. Yeah. The Cowboys look fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 well, you never know because, again, it's like I'm a diehard Dodger fan. They've been playing well oh, the last man. four years. But prior up. to that, like, they go to the get to the playoffs and then they lose. The bullpen blows it. And, like, the Cowboys are 8-8. Eight and, eight and you know, do they have the team? They've had a lot of good teams. Yeah. They got a lot of good teams. Now what they have to do is after this break, they just keep together. So, yeah. I know what I was going to ask you. Uh, what was one of your first cards you've collected? Man. You know, was it a Packer card? Because you said you grew Actually, up Actually, no. It was my, I mean, my biggest collection is definitely Kobe Bryant. Got That's it. what inspired me to really get into cards. And uh, back in 09, actually. Back in 2009, I was 12 years old walking through a Target. And you know, they have, they have that little section with all the cars. Oh, they yeah. have all those other little games. Well, not anymore. And, yeah, not so much anymore. But still, like, I walked in one day with my mom and I just kind of gravitated towards the uh, sports because that's when I really started getting into sports was back in 2009. Um, 
I grew up a huge Laker fan, math like you know, crazy Laker fan. My my dad, my my stepdad, my my, my whole family Laker fans. And yeah, I walked into Target. My mom asked my mom, said, "Hey, can you buy a pack?" I think it was 2009 Upper Deck. I believe it was. They just they were like a dollar or two dollars a pack. Nice. Asked my mom if she can buy me one. She said yes. Opened it up and just fell in love. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember what players were in there. I mean, that was back in Curry's rookie year. Yeah. But um. Went back in, then you know, a week later, bought another pack. Went back in a week later, bought another pack, and the first time I bought, I pulled that Kobe card. I mean, Game man, over. I was <laughs> like, like you were hooked. holy, like, oh my mom, look, it's Kobe, it's Kobe, it's yeah. Kobe, you know, and that's what really hooked me into this game, and um, you, you know, style, uh, gratefully my mom was able to to help, to help support me and and help me buy some. You know, I was only twelve years old, but buying me. Hopefully, you, know, you did some yard work. I I had to, man. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, those, hopefully those dollar packs, bro. I had to work for them, <laughs> yeah. but. Wash the cars, or yeah, no, she. That's cool. If, if I did well in school, you know, yeah, I did well in school. Oh, yeah. I did did good, good grades. You know, I played sports. So if I did well in a game, you know, here's yeah. A, that's kind of that was yeah, that how was I started. Yeah, yeah you know, my mom would, would encourage us to do well in sports and academics, and we had a uh, we used to ch we chase the cheese. You know, yep. we see it at the end of the month. Go down to Jolly Spirits Liquor Store down in Port <laughs> Shout Amy. Out yep. Yeah, you, they still go rocking. Yeah, they're, they're still, still doing it. it. I was just in the day to day. They saw packs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, again, she was seven, eight years old. Excuse me. As we continue to go on the uh, card uh, show scene, what are maybe some tips that you can give out there to? You know, and, and I guess I'm not getting at you leaving your suitcase at the airport, but uh, <laughs> we got to discuss that one. Yeah, <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. So uh, I don't know if you want to share the story, but anyway, maybe you want to give some tips out. You know, as you're going to the show, yeah. maybe some safety tips, like do's and don'ts on the show. Um, you know, as yeah. guys think like, oh shoot, there's a show here. You know what? And, you know they're thinking, what cars do I got to bring, and how? You know, do I got to get money or what, all this? But what about the safety? You know, what, yeah. what are you what are you thinking Safety's about that? Big. I mean. Personally, for me, when I go to shows, and uh, it's kind of tough because the safety thing is it's kind of tough. But I usually always roll with a couple people. Yeah, I mean, I, you got. You, I don't think you should go alone, especially if you're dealing with hiring stuff, cash. Especially because a lot of people, um, they know that car shows it's it's huge. It's, yeah. it's, it's there's tons of money. There's tons of inventory. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I always go with a few friends, you know, just in case. You gotta keep that in mind. You never because you never know. Yeah, you never know. Security wise, um, you got yourself a nice box. Yeah, I definitely got a you guys got a high end case because you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, don't be dumb like me and leave it at an airport. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, we don't, we'll, don't got to talk about that. Well, we, we won't, but we'll be quick. Rick turned around one day uh, at the airport, jumped in a car, forgot that he put his box down. Thankfully, a good Samaritan had a great heart. Uh, reached out. Rick got his uh, box back like twelve hours later. Um, but his whole personal collection. So. Um, it wasn't a good feeling for all of us. I know, uh, shoot, once you sent that message, it was just painstaking. So, But, again, yeah, little things like that, you know, just being uh, around, knowing your surroundings. Yeah, exactly, uh, know your surroundings, know where you're at, know what's uh, – and Have a good box. Have a good, nice lock box. You know, yeah, especially lock when you're, box and keep that thing hugged to you, man. Yeah. Keep it tight to you. I mean, or a backpack. Yeah. A backpack works great because yeah. you just have it on your back. You can throw your stuff in there. You're not going to put it down. Um, Do you have I mean, fun yeah. at card shows? I know. Oh, tons. It's, I love it. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's well. Who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. No. I mean December 11th, right here, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, December Local. 11th, we'll be here. Uh, have a card show. All the vendors will be set up. Uh, it's morning till morning, should I it's, say? Uh, I was here last morning. I got here around 8:30, I think, later last one, and I left around midnight. Midnight, and I left early. <laughs> and you left early. <laughs> I, left early. <laughs> I left early for, for work the next day. Yeah, but, no, you know what? As you know, it's it's a it's a family atmosphere. We we definitely like to. Ask questions, have fun, yes. you know, what do you like to do, you know, get to know each other yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, I just well, want to talk about the hobby and, and really open up and, you know, because like you said earlier, I mean, backtrack a little bit here. Like you said earlier, a lot of people just see your name, they just see your Instagram name. They don't know who's behind that, your Instagram, who's behind your Facebook account. They don't Absolutely. know. And, and so to get out here and be able to actually show who we are and, and how we started collecting, because, I mean, you've been in the game for... How long? Yeah. Like forever. Yeah. You know? you know, on the buy sell side, you know, when I finally got the, uh, as my wife would say, you know, start selling your stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was right after my brother passed away, you know, yeah. right after my brother passed away. But collecting, oh, yeah, for a, a long time. I still have pieces in the back that I, I still hold. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what that's what's awesome is like a lot of people like see, like obviously I set up at shows, so obviously I buy and sell. Yeah. You know, that's how we make our bread and that's how we do it. But like we're more than just that. You oh, know? 100%. We're, we're, we're collectors. Like I've been collecting for 12 years. Like, like I don't move any of my Kobe pieces. I don't yeah. like I don't move like the like those sentimental cards and like I have like dollar cards that I just 
that I love. That, yeah. you know, I'll, oh, no, I'll cherish I, more than my $500. I had to cards. condense some of that. I, you know, I had to condense yeah. in a box. But again, I got down to like, okay, these are really meaningful. And a lot of it's not even graded for me. Yeah, it doesn't be graded. I yeah. buy the card, you know? Yeah. So. Well, with that, you know what? We had a few cards. You know, Ooh. we're going to end off on some grading. I'm going to throw, I'm going to put four cards in front of you. We're going to guess the grades. Uh, yeah, we were talking about grading. Here. I thought, you know, <laughs> let's do something fun here. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's guess the grade. So Rick's going to go through, uh, and we'll both do it. How about that? Yeah. These are not, I actually don't even, yeah, these came from, are these yours? No, these are Yeah, you, you probably uh, corrupted the system. The, that, I, yeah. I, I, swear I didn't. Yeah, I joined. Okay, so here, let's let's guess the grades. Let's guess the oh, grades man. out here. So I got to, testing my eye here, this is tough, because you have, you have all kinds of different years here. You yeah, different years. So, all, yeah, the 90s, we got modern, we got, modern, we got a little modern. thicker. Modern's a lot easier. Okay, here, we'll go way. this. We'll go by, yeah, we'll go this way. Oh, uh, man, are you testing my eye here to see? Well, let's both do it. Yeah, speaking about the grades. This is tough. I think sending looks off a little bit. Corner looks a little. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to shoot for a nine here. Okay. What are you thinking? Uh, on the Bobby Witt yeah. mode. Uh, uh, that was my. Uh, I'm going to guess that. I'm going to guess a nine on that. This one. I'm going to guess. This one looks pretty dang good to me. The only thing is, is these these thicker cards, yeah, you know, have multiple stuff. paper layers, so you know to get inside those, are, you know, can make it a little difficult reading. And then obviously we're not looking at surface, so hey, hey, we'll give point. ourselves a half point either way. How about that? <laughs> There's no surface yeah, looking. I see what you're saying. This card is in the cherry. Front. Yeah, it's pristine nice. in the front. Yeah, and the back's nice. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go just because it's a thick card, and because it has a lot of this kind of like foil Printing. on it. Yeah. I'm gonna go with a nine. I, All right, I'm gonna it, I'm gonna take a gander. I'm gonna put it in the ten range, just cause I, you know, just the way the prints looked in just a few seconds. I, I'm gonna put that in the ten range myself. Now this being an older card, edging, oh, you know, card, that is a sweet card. card. You don't see those very often. You never do. I'm gonna probably put this as a nine. You think so? Yeah, what I think year it's a. Is this? Uh, I just wish we had the parallel. Ninety four. Yeah, as I say, ninety four upper. Yeah, ninety four. I'm gonna go. Oh man. I see a little bit of whining. Yeah. I'm going to go with an eight. You are? I think it's All right. I think it's a strong eight, but I think it's strong eight. eight. I'm going to go think, with the nine. Because, you know, the, they, the reason they, for it is because that a lot of this dark area or the edging on the back yeah. is strong. So yeah. when I look at a card like front, that. The front looks great. The front looks. You, now, we can't tell with the foil scratching by exactly. any means. Uh, but, yeah. again, I like yours. Let's, let's do Sweet it. Sweet card. Sweet I mean, card. When do you ever see these come up? A yeah. uh, Jordan base, you know, in the, in the socks. You got, yeah, they got the red foil ones, too, in that. Yeah. And Ken, that's Griffey, man. Ken Griffey. Ken Griffey. We won't grade the auto. There's a lot of moving pieces in his auto. Oh, man. It's a tough one. I'm going to go, uh, let's, I'm going to go with an eight on that. With an eight? Yeah. I think the little whiting on the corner. Little corners. corner integrity's gone. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go eight, but. What? If you had a tough grader. I think well, tough, what are you saying? I think a grading is subjective. Might, I think a tough grader might give it a seven. All right. Just I, let's take but, a peek. All right. How about this? Though. You think it's an eight? So two eights. I think it's ten. Let's pull this one. Nine. Nine. Yep. All right. Nine. Nine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're on two, that two one. Two for two. Eight. eight. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That one's pretty good. The eight. Beautiful though. I like this one. Oh, eight. eight. Beautiful. I think it's just the moving. You have so many, so many different things on that. So game. my guesses were one nine, two nines, and it, one ten, two nines, and a an eight. And Rick was four for four. I think I was off on. I that I, I, yeah, I three. Gave, I gave All right. a couple, but I'll still give you four for four, Rick. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> All right. Appreciate well, you doing that. You know what? It's always cool. I I have the guys go around the office, and we'll do that every now and then, and just put stickers on here and be like, "Hey, guess the grade. Yeah. Guess the grade." I'm just kind of looking at different pieces, especially a lot of the newer stuff that comes out. And once it gets graded, to really say, okay, what do you see here? It's pretty um, crazy difference yeah. between the older 90s stuff to, right? to nowadays. Yeah. But. So, Rick, I see as we're digging through your collection there, you have uh, not only PSA slabs, but SGC slabs. Got a couple of them. Yeah. Got what are your thoughts? Oh, I got it. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. Wow. Some decent ones. Yeah, Seriously. beautiful. I mean, Opticalo, 9.5. Yeah, guy's balling right now. He is. He but is. For the Lakers collection. Kareem. Can't go wrong. Uh, so, so what are your thoughts on that? I, I see as, as you, you know, you're going through, you did bring out a Beckett slab, but you do have a few SGC. Yeah. Where do, um, you, where do you see them going with uh, some of these modern cards that, that you're showing? 
I think they're gonna. I honestly think they're gonna have a somewhat of a tough time with PSA, because PSA says they're gonna start opening up, you know, some more uh, uh, service levels here pretty soon. So I think once that happens, I think everyone's gonna start to kind of go back to PSA, as long as their prices are right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what I mentioned earlier. Yeah. You know, it's all price. You know, where does the card value to the price go? Exactly. So like for me, like the, I didn't buy this SGC slab for the SGC slab. I bought it for the card. I wanted the autograph and I wanted it. Um, but. And you know it's already been graded, it's authenticated, and, you know, so it's a, a legitimate... Exactly. Yeah. Um, and nothing against SGC at all, because they have a huge... Uh, they have a great... Um, they're, like, they're, like, they're vintage stuff. Like, yeah, oh, a lot of amazing. People, like, they have a great uh, grading... Well, how do you say it? Grading well, service... For, reputation, sorry. Reputation for the grading mm -hmm. on, the, on the older stuff. Like, I definitely trust the grading on the vintage and everything like that. And not to say I don't on their modern stuff, I just would rather have my stuff in PSA. Got it. You know, nothing against either of the uh, mm -hmm. grading companies. There. Do you see that going forward? Because, again, as more modern cards get put into SGC slabs yeah. due to, you know, an opening, should I say, you know, and then also, you know, a lot of variables. You know, people, you know, they're always on timing. You know, they're always on this or that. So yeah. once it all gets open, do you see them still, I mean, it, do you see them, uh, SGC, uh, having a play or, you know, PSA really, you know, because obviously in your, in your deck there you have more PSA slabs. Yeah. Well, I think enough, I think, there's been enough people that have gone into the SGC route Albert because Abreu. PSA is so expensive that it's always going to be there. Yeah. SGC is still going to be point. there. Albert you know, there's Abreu. so many people. Like, I, the more I go to shows, the more and more SGC slabs I see out there. Yeah. You know, and yeah, I, I, again, I don't, it's not, I don't. I'm not saying that I don't trust their grades or anything. I just personally, for me, I've I've always collected PSA. Right. Yeah. You know. Here yeah. We go, but the SGC's price price Ooh, points nice are. Answer. Works fantastic. With the modern market, you know, the way it is, with a lot of cards being produced, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there's there's a lot of inventory, and a lot of people like different players. Mm -hmm. So they all want to get from Seiku to Bull Ball graded to your heroes to your Job and Rants. You know, so I think for me, the values of the cards and the grading price will kind of fall in line, you know, and then that's kind of my thinking. And then also just the, uh, you know, the transparency of knowing that that is a legitimate graded card. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, you know, I think, you know, as we continue, it'll, it'll be interesting. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know the exact path of it, but, you know, my guess is, you know, there will be some kind of market for it. There will be a market for it just based off the kind of cards and people like to have something graded. No doubt. You know. Yeah, no doubt. Especially going back to the price point. I mean, yeah. How much is it cost? What's the cheapest level of PSA right now? 175 And yeah, she sees what? $30. $29. Yeah, $29. You get a great card graded, especially... Uh, of a company that already has a reputation yeah. versus like there's other there's a couple other we won't name in naming the companies there's a few other companies that are out there that are charging also 30 bucks and they have zero reputation they have zero uh overall like I mean, they have nothing but they just, they just started so i'm trying to say you know so so why not you know, especially especially for cards like i submitted a card with you like three weeks ago because it's a pc card yep you know and why not yeah so now it doesn't have to sit in your card saver Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, and then they're nice holders. I mean, PSA, obviously, PSA is, you know, the standard, and, you know, yeah. they do an amazing job. And, you know, a lot of our stuff here, we do a ton of PSA, you know, ourselves. Um, but, yeah, no, I just think it's an, an interesting topic, you know, when it comes to the grading, you know, and as I ask around and, like, what are your thoughts on it and how do you see it going forward and, you know, just to kind of get some, you know, yeah. do some market research. Yeah, and, I will say from, like, my perspective as like a consumer when i go to a, sp a show and i see other people's like inventory sure but like <laughs> let's say i go to uh, somebody else's table you know and i look through all their stuff if i see a PS psa slab and i see sgc yeah, slab um, depending on the card like i don't look at it differently yeah. like especially if i look at like especially autographs and vintage and stuff like that yeah. i don't good point i don't look at it differently versus if i see another company that i'm like kind of like eh, you know then i kind of like hey, i'm gonna stay away from that yeah. card yeah, yeah. Good like i had no problem buying these these cards yeah. like I had no issue. I, didn't, I wasn't worried yeah, about it. I think it. the slides are sweet. Yeah. And actually, that's a nice card. Yeah, for like you, you mentioned earlier, forget the grade. That's a nice card. Yeah. That's you know, exactly. Optic Hollow, uh, you know, JB, you know, had a great game. Oh, man. You know, college receiver he has. Yeah. Jamar Chase. Bengals looking good, man. They're shocking. Yeah. I mean, I, lie. I would lie be lying if I said that. You know, the Browns are looking good last season, too. You know, you, 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 know, you kind of go. Steelers were what? Yeah, yeah. I, again, it takes time. You know, after a while, 
you know, the 10th week, teams really start gaining their identity and saying, okay, as we continue going forward. And, exactly. You know, oh, I love football. So. And then the Cowboys finish, you know, at 500. Yeah, well, the good news is here, though, <laughs> listen, the good news here is they added an extra game, okay? So <laughs> there's an extra game in the system, so we can't be 8-8. Eight and eight. So we can't be 8-8, eight and eight, okay? Uh, I'll give you the 9-8. All right, all right. I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right, Rick, I appreciate you stopping by today, you know, showing us a little bit about your collection, a little bit about you, um, you know, who you are, and kind of like, you know, what takes you as a collector, you know? Put up, go, it's your time, put oh, out your man. Instagram, your YouTube, your TikTok. I don't got any Just not stuff, your home address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got any I'm on Instagram mainly, uh, Rick's underscore cards 24, like you said. Uh, pretty active on there. I like to post my story at least a few times a day. Um, I actively buy, sell, trade, so hit me up and, you know. Slide into the DMs. <laughs> yeah, and he's a big Packer fan. So if you ever have Packer cards, Packers, I do. Lakers, Rodgers, Jordy Nelson. Actually, I know we didn't talk about Jordy Nelson's my other big PC. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Anything Lakers really, Kobe and Lamar Pog- Odom. Pog- Pog- my other guys. So if you got any Pogs autographs, especially hit me up. <laughs> yeah. So that's Rick. You know we're here. Uh, we're gonna end it here. This is Mark's Card Shop Talk, episode number two. Appreciate you stopping by, and uh, let's do it again. Hell yeah, man.